Good evening, everyone. And a warm welcome to all of you who have joined us for this celebration of 10 years of our HR roundtables. Today's discussion revolving around the theme, Inspirational Leadership, the Art and Science of Developing Leaders, is presented by BIMTEC in association with the National HRD Network and our knowledge partner, Deloitte. I am Dr. Manushi Chaudhary, Professor for Organizational Behavior and Human Resource Management at BIMTEC, and I am your anchor this evening. We started with our first HR roundtable in October 2011 in Mumbai, and reminiscing about this 10-year journey makes me so nostalgic. We have organized 37 roundtables on different themes across various metros in India and received tremendous response from the HR fraternity in all the places. In the first series of three years, we focused on the theme, the art and science of developing leaders and organized 12 roundtables with as our knowledge partner. The moderator on most such occasions was Mr. Ajay Soni, then practice leader, leadership consulting at Anne Hewitt, who is the moderator for today's discussion as well. Incidentally, Mr. Rajiv Dubey, who is on the panel today, was also a panelist in our first HR roundtable. In 2012, we joined hands with the National HRD Network, and since 2014, Deloitte has collaborated as our knowledge partner. Over these 10 years, very vital themes were identified and discussed at length. More than 175 HR and business leaders from various sectors addressed around 5,000 participants to bring in clarity and provide a holistic outlook on the themes. On most occasions, we were fortunate to have the presence of women leaders as well as academic thought leaders on our panel. Till early 2020, we met in the wonderful ambience of huge banquet halls of five-star hotels. And our discussions provided not just food for thought and avenues for worthwhile interaction, but were also followed by a lavish spread of exquisite dishes. But after the pandemic, things have been different. Our mobility has been restricted and social distancing is the new normal, which all of us have become accustomed to. The COVID-19 pandemic might have restricted our movement, but it was not able to dampen our spirits. We have adroitly shifted to this digital platform and here we are celebrating the completion of 10 years of our HR roundtables. I would now like to request Dr. H. Chaturvedi, Director of BIMTECH, to deliver the welcome address. With a master's degree in commerce and doctorate in business management from Agra University, Dr. Chaturvedi has more than 40 years of experience in teaching, research, and administration. As a former director with the AICT New Delhi, he has been associated with the formulation of policies, planning, regulation, and control of management education. He is a founder member and alternate president of EPSI, a national platform for eminent educationists, education service providers, and edu entrepreneurs. 
over to you sir thank you dr manushi choudhary good evening on behalf of bimtech i have great pleasure in extending a warm welcome to all present on this occasion we are fortunate to have with us a noted actor and versatile host mr shekhar suman as our chief guest i am sure you would have watched his stellar performance in films like utsav or popular tv shows like the great indian laughter challenge and comedy circus today he will be sharing with us his own journey and thoughts on inspirational leadership i believe that his address will motivate young people to maintain focused efforts towards achieving their goals as we celebrate the 10 year anniversary of our hr round table in association with the national hrd network and deloitte it is a matter of great pride to have amidst us some of the leading thought leaders who have been actively involved in nurturing engaging and leading talent their views in today's discussion will be extremely relevant since they represent a wide spectrum of leadership in diverse areas our galaxy of speakers today includes mr ajay soni chief learning and leadership development officer group hr aditya birla group mr p dwarganath former chairman glexo smith klein consumer health care Mr Rajiv Dubey chairman Mahindra Insurance Brokers Limited and member of the governing body ILO Geneva Mr SY Siddhi ki executive advisor Maruti Suzuki India Limited Ms Pati Rastogi director HR Amazon India they are known in the industry for their dedicated <coughs> practice a hearty welcome to each one of them friends human capital development the nurturing and development of leaders teams and organizations has increase, increasingly been the focus of initiatives to bring about organizational success we have been discussing such relevant issues in all our hr round tables over the last 10 years yet despite consider, considerable research and implementation of theory and practice it is still very tough to actually become a good leader although there are millions of books on leadership and many leadership gurus to learn from leadership is not something one can simply read about and master it requires more than merely reading or trying to experiment with tactics tested in a leadership development workshop it is something that one has to learn by doing it is an art and experiential science the turbulence of global society and culture is forcing organizations to realize that the models and habits developed for a stable environment may not work in a dynamic world organizations and their members must continuously adapt with or coevolve by interacting with the environment understanding leadership is no longer is no longer a matter of isolating elements behaviors traits or situations understanding the present state of an organization will provide little information about its state in future the more complex a system and more volatile the environment like in the case of our present pandemic the less predictable things become inspirational leadership is the ability to drive people to reach great heights of performance and success despite all odds i imagine the inspirational leadership provided by great people like mahatma gandhi abraham lincoln and nelson mandela <coughs> such leaders demonstrate qualities like passion purpose courage and authenticity they frequently invest in the development of the talent of those around them and by exhibiting their devotion to their work and ideals they may help a firm thrive it is basically the ability to have a positive impact on those around you and inspire others to achieve their goals i remember an an, an anecdote about mahatma gandhi when he was offering his arrest to the british police on august 9 1942 at a bombay uh, meeting ground uh, august kranti maidan and uh, uh, one foreign correspondent asked mahatma gandhi <coughs> what will happen to the freedom movement quit india movement when he will be arrested and imprisoned mahatma gandhi replied that we have we have thousands and lakhs of leaders spread across the country 
and in each village in each town and each city you will find leaders who are already groomed and trained to lead the freedom movement this is inspirational leadership and mahatma gandhi has provided a great footprint for all of us to follow if we want to become inspirational leaders effective leadership is not a one size fits all approach companies need a leadership profile that represents their particular environment strategy business model and culture to achieve outstanding performance they need leaders who inspire people and achieve the desired outcomes from the large body of available research it is apparent apparent that the very best of organizational leadership is rational and inspirational ethical future oriented focused on employee development and laden with the humility that characterizes great leaders equal equally important is the knowledge that best of the leadership can be expressed through small but meaningful behaviors enacted at the right time these were some of the my random thoughts i look forward to know the views of our eminent panelists on these per pertinent issues thank you and i am looking for a very fruitful discussion today thank you thank you sir it's our privilege to have with us our chief guest on this occasion mr shekhar suman thank you so much i am um, yeah mr shekhar suman is the only son of the most eminent surgeons professor of surgery and erstwhile <coughs> director general of health services bihar late dr fani bhushan prasad he did his schooling from st xavier's patna and vikas vidyalaya ranchi he graduated with history honors from ramjas college delhi university he started his career as a theater actor in the repertory company of shri ram center for art and culture new delhi after attaining a diploma in acting from there he worked in several plays before he moved to bombay in the early 80s and got an unprecedented break as a hero with shashi kapoor's magnum opus utsav opposite the prima donna rekha in 1985 he has worked in several hit films like anubhav nache mayuri tridev manav hatya kharidar pati parmeshwar ranbhoomi ek se badhkar ek and chor machaye shor opposite actresses like madhuri dikshit juhi chawla dimple kapadia and ravina tandon his stint on television began with sharad joshi written wah janab followed by reporter dekh bhai dekh andaaz ab amar prem and several other very successful shows a trend setter on television he became its first superstar after his late night talk show movers and shakers became an iconic show which was regularly watched even by the erstwhile prime minister shri atal bihari vajpayee he was the judge of many reality shows including the immensely successful show the great indian laughter challenge and comedy circus his political satire pol khol has been running successfully since 2004 and continues to regale the audiences he has won several awards for acting and hosting and was continuously voted the most popular actor for 15 straight years on television he was voted amongst the top 10 mumbaikars who made a difference to the country and was also amongst the top 10 brands of india in 2000 mr shekhar suman also contested for the parliamentary general ele elections in the year 2009 on a congress ticket from the prestigious patna sahib seat recently on stage he played sahir ludhianvi and saadat hasan manto in ek mulakat and ek ha he directed and produced a film called hotless a medical thriller with his son adhyayan suman in the lead currently he is shooting for a web series called ak47 based on the criminalization of politics in bihar during the 90s where he plays a very prominent politician he has trained in light classical music and is a fitness enthusiast he is also a great chef and enjoys traveling the audience awaits your address sir over to you Manse, thank you, thank you so much for that uh, uh, slightly long winding uh, introduction. I don't know whether I, I I deserve all all that praise that came my way, uh, but yes, it's it's been a long and arduous journey since 1985 when I began my career with my debut film Utsav. Um, uh, 
But before that, uh, let me just first introduce myself. Hi, I'm Shekhar Suman. It's my absolute uh, privilege and honor uh, to be with all of you this evening and to be a part of the 10th anniversary celebrations of DimTech HR Roundtable, uh, which is, sounds a bit alien to me, but the only roundtable that I have is in my dining room. But I'll try and come around this one. Um, uh, I would uh, like to also uh, thank profusely uh, Mr. Kishore Kumar Sinha, who happens to be my uncle also. And we grew up together in the same house. And I have grown up, I must say, and say so proudly, uh, under his tutelage. And uh, I always saw him as my leader. Uh, you know, especially when uh, when I got to know that he, he stood first class first from Patna University, Patna College, uh, uh, doing his labor and social welfare. And I knew that he was going to go a long way. And then I think all of us are blessed to have him with us. Uh, he's going through a bit of a rough patch as far as his health is concerned. And I sincerely pray to God, everyone, and I implore all of you to do so. So he just uh, comes out of it uh, ASAP. Um, my family is eternally grateful to him. Uh, uh, for 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 being around for so many years, helping us in in times of distress, and he especially looked after my mom, uh, like like his own mom, and I'm uh, Shamucha eternally indebted to you for that. Uh, he's a, he's a, indeed a very kind-hearted man. Um, he's noble. He's philanthropic. Uh, he's all of that that a man should be. Uh, we are blessed to have him and the family. Um, well, I hope uh, that uh, all of you are safe. As Mansi was talking about this uh, uh, pandemic that we've all gone through. And I'm a little unfortunate that when all these years, when the roundtable conferences were held in five and seven star hotels with a lavish spread, um, I was never called. I was not a part of it. And it's only when you know we have moved into the, in, into the digital space that I have been called as a chief guest. And, I can't even see you all, which is such a pity, but I hope that once this gets over, all of us go to get together and, and celebrate with a lot of uh, gusto. Um, I hope all of you are safe. Are you looking after yourself? You're back to you being normal. You're back to being in love with someone or something. You're doubly vaccinated. And right now you are happy behind your designer masks. Um, they say, uh, blessed is the man who does not speak until he knows what he's talking about. And that's precisely what is making me slightly edgy and slightly nervy at this moment. Well, some men succeed with what they know, some by what they do, and a few by what they are. I am none of the above. I, I guess I'm just plain lucky to be God's favorite child. Knowledge, they say, is knowing a fact. And wisdom is knowing what to do with that fact. I sincerely hope and pray to God that I would be putting all or some of my knowledge and wisdom into today's session judiciously. As you know, that knowledge enables you what to say. Wisdom enables you when to say and how much. So I'm going to be to the point and brief. Though it's going to be a little difficult for me. Knowledge comes by taking things apart. But wisdom comes by putting things together. Education can't make us all leaders, but it can surely teach us which leaders to follow. As they say, either lead, follow, or get out of my way. So I leave it to you to decide what to do, considering all of you are far more talented, far more intelligent, erudite, and experienced than I am. And it would be audacious and egregious on my part to talk to you about anything for which you may have a far better understanding than I do. Nonetheless, I have been assigned this humongous and daunting responsibility of talking about leadership to all of you. It's almost like teaching the importance of stripes to a zebra or melody to a nightingale. 
but i hope all of you will overlook this audacity and temerity of mine now leadership as the word literally means is to lead people and all of you would agree to that unanimously of course and we have read it in books and i'm going to be slightly pedantic and all of that which i'm going to speak right now uh, a lot of it has been taken from books and you know i've heard people talk about it uh, so few things would sound familiar to you because there is a commonality about what we all think uh, about good leadership or, or who is a good leader i think a good leader is one who leads by example and that's what we have heard all along in classrooms while we went to school and college that you know somebody who leads by example it sets an example and says he's a good leader we should all follow him but i guess the connotation of leadership is far deeper than that simply put a leader is the one who knows the way goes the way and shows the way so a leader is very confident he knows the path that he is walking on he shows you that this is the path you need to walk on and he is confident about it he shows the way he goes the way the business of a leader is to turn weaknesses into strength obstacles into stepping stones and disaster into triumph so you will see leaders uh making something out of nothing because they have the vision and they have the strength to turn negatives into positives come to think of it leaders are ordinary people with extraordinary talent and as the saying goes that the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra which is come to think of it actually quite a bit great leaders don't set out to be a leader they set out to make a difference for them it's never about the role but it's about the goal all of you would agree that life is about discovering who we are all 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 along our lives we are trying to discover who we are within and without leadership or leading is about striving to become better than we are and helping everything and everyone around us to become better too a true leader would not only motivate you he'll navigate you even instigate you encourage empower you to be the best he can be a true leader has the confidence to stand alone the courage to make tough decisions and the compassion to listen to the needs of others that that's very important though, because people are constantly talking they are not listening so you know uh, he a leader though he is leading would have the compassion um and the consideration to lend a lend lend his ears to that he he would let you know he would be patient enough to hear you out he does not set out to be a leader but becomes one by the quality of his actions and integrity of his intent now the task of the leader is to get their people from where they are to where they have not been and one of the tests and mind you this is very very important one of the tests of leadership is the ability to recognize a problem before it becomes an emergency so basically a leader would identify a problem and he would preempt it you know before it just blows out of proportion before it goes out of hand he would preempt it a good leader is someone who uh, who accomplishes the mission so if he set out a goal it is on a mission he would make sure that he it doesn't take a u turn he'll make sure that he doesn't sort of give up he'll make sure that uh uh he doesn't say okay i tried my best but i couldn't do it he will make sure that he would complete that mission he will have and this is very important that he will have the respect of the subordinates now having the respect of the subordinates very important because you know so many times the subordinates or people around you would listen to you out of fear or out of insecurity they might feel that you lose a job or uh you know you lose your place in the sun because you know you're not listening to your leader but if somebody 
is following you out of respect. That's 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 a great thing. So you know, you must have the respect of the subordinates, and he should be able to make the most difficult decisions when needed. You know, you you are at the crossroads. You are in a jam. You are in a tizzy. You are confused. You are confounded, and you don't know. And that's the time he stands up and he says, "I think between A and B, or between C and D." This is the best option, and I'm going ahead with it, and I am confident about it. That's what the leader is all about. He is cocksure about what he's 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 doing. For me, I believe that a great leader needs to have a plethora, a variety of qualities, myriad qualities, but most importantly, a sense of fairness, diligence, you know, hard work. and common consideration for others he would do everything confidently and in courageous this confidence in others so if i am the leader and i am confident i make sure that i pass on that confidence to other people as well i should not just um, revel in the fact that i am a very confident leader and others are you know subservient and obsequious and uh, they, that that's why they should remain no i think they should rise above that and for that they need to have that confidence and and for that good leaders would pass on that confidence make sure that they instill in you that sort of confidence and obviously he would a, a good leader would possess a clear vision he will he will be courageous he will have integrity honesty humility and absolute clear focus that i was talking about great leaders help people reach their goals are not afraid to hire people push them aside or that they would be sidelined so they are not afraid to hire people who might be better than them so if people come around and says he's better than you and he says so be it i'm happy that i hired them and they're better than me and as a matter of fact he will take pride in the accomplishments of those they help along the way my idea of leadership is being able to inspire others always always you have to you to see as a leader what happens that you you are on a on on a difficult path it's not easy to lead the people and there's so many uh to get a sense of unanimity and because somebody would probably have a difference of opinion so you have to constantly talk to them communicate with them motivate them you know set a vision and of course you should have mutual respect and you have respect others and 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 lead by example as i said before a leader must have an honest understanding of who they are and what they are capable of if you have the desire and the will power there is no power on earth that can stop you from becoming an effective leader and that that's what i've experienced now i'll just go back to my childhood you know childhood i was a very sort of shy introverted scared um a uh, reticent kid i would uh, i would shy away from public gatherings from uh, uh people you know people gathered i i i would be very scared uh to to be around them because i i was scared that they would ask me some question and i would have no answer and uh, more often than not i would be monosyllabic i'll be hiding behind my mother my dad behind curtains and i was not able to communicate i was not able i was not able to gather that confidence and and that sort of uh, made me uh, go through terrible inferiority complex and i used to always wonder will will i be able to grow out of this will i be able to overcome my fears will i be ever will i ever be able to kind of lead a show i once overheard my father was talking to a few of his friends and he said you know i'm very happy about my daughter but but my son he's unfortunately the the black sheep of the family and that did me in you know i it was such a huge setback for me my father talking about me like that to his friends and i thought i'm 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 no good as a matter of fact i'm writing a book 
an autobiography and I named it The Black Sheep. But it was because of him calling me The Black Sheep that I had, you know, I, take, I took it as a challenge to fight it out. And I, I decided to just pull out all stops. So when I was sent to a public school in Rachi, because we there, there I was trying to, you know, uh, just come out of my, my cocoon. And, and I said, so what if I stumble and fall? So what if I fail? Um, and I realized that the, the, you know, the strength in life is not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. So I said, who's scared of falling and who's scared of failing? So I started participating in debates, elocution contests, and, and I slowly started opening up. I would be there, part of the assembly, part of the week. I remember the first uh, part of the week was uh, child is the father of the man. The child is the father of a man. And I started off, I still remember my first line, what a paradox. You know, it's a paradox that sets one thinking and that one and that leads one to perceive the reality that lies latent. But true to the tenor of the modern times, wisdom cries out on the street and no man hears it. So uh, for me, it was coming onto my own. And so whether it was leading a, a, a cricket team or a boxing team or cross country or, or singing or elocution or anywhere, I was all over the place. And I realized that I could communicate. Now, communication is, is as I said, you have a communication is not just always about being articulate. It's about just being there and trying to put your points across. And sometimes you can stumble. Sometimes you can probably not be clear. But just by being there, trying to interact with people helps a lot. And, and I started winning all, all the contest I started getting trophies for my school and I realized that probably I am developing that uh, confidence which was latent in me. There was, uh, everybody is blessed with these super qualities, but you know, you have to look within yourself and, and sort of find what you're good at and try to bring all those qualities to the forefront. And I was a changed Boy, well, by the time I came out of school, I was in college, I could, uh, I could actually lead. So when I was in a mahesha or, or anywhere when I was sitting where there were a couple of people, I would lead the show. I would, uh, you know, participate in discussions and I would always have people behind me saying, yes, he's right, because I had the, the confidence and I had the conviction that what I was saying and what I was doing was right. Um, and you see the, the, these qualities in all the big leaders, uh, though uh, mine was slightly misplaced when I was still younger. When I was younger, I thought, uh, you know, uh, my, my idol was Hitler because I just, you know, like uh, his posture. I like his stance when he was standing like that and the whole lot of people saying, hey, Hitler, hey, Hitler. And I thought, well, I grow up, I want to be Hitler. So I was like growing up with these cousins of mine all around me. And I said, look, all of you come here. You know who I am? So he said, yes, you are a bhaiya, you are a bhai, this, that. I said, no, I'm Hitler. I'm the supremo. So when I walk in, everybody should just queue up and say, hail Hitler or hail supremo. And then I used to play these little games with them. I thought I treated them as Jews. And, uh, you know, I, I would do all kinds of evil things. Uh, of course, I would not advise anybody to do that. But uh, as I said, a misplaced leadership. I, I will put them all in a car's boot, dicky shut it and say, now stay there. And for as long as you could, you know, you probably uh, will enter the Guinness Book of World Records for holding on to your breath for about two minutes or three minutes. And they said, but Bhaiya, we are all dying. I said, no, you'll be there because I'm telling you to do so. So somebody, uh, a cousin of mine who is now an IS officer, she said, what do I do, Supremo? And I said, you know what, you take your chunni, tie it around your neck uh, and uh, I will tie it. Uh, to the other end of the fan. I'll switch on the fan and you will go circling up, but you should hold on. That's what heroes are made up of. And you are my hero, so you go up. And, and she says, oh, but, but that's very scary. And I said, you do it because I'm telling you. I convinced her that it would be good for her to tie the chuli around her neck and go right up. 
and of course uh, she was saved in the nick of time and she nearly died and that that's another story uh but as i said i was devel- developing all these qualities you know good or bad i don't know but along the way i realized what was good and what was bad for me what were the right ingredients or the recipe of being uh, a good leader and when we say leaders we don't necessarily mean these politicians you know they are there of course uh, but you know a leader as i said uh, shamucha uh, mr sinha was a great leader because we all listened to him and we all followed him my father was a great leader my mother was a great leader and so we we just learned from all of them and uh, as i said there there are certain um uh, uh you know a few uh, a few uh, common qualities that uh, uh all leaders have whether it was you know uh, with the gentleman who was talking about mahatma gandhi or mandela or abraham lincoln or churchill or anybody of course they are all good orators uh, you know uh, they're great communicators and uh, but they have that confidence you know and uh, of course you need to be conscientious uh, you can't uh, sort of uh, you know lead people up the garden path you have to be you have to be uh, noble and, uh, with your intentions and people will follow now the big question is are leaders born or can they be taught i think they can be bought uh, sorry that that's more than shakers coming to the forefront jokes aside i personally feel that anyone anyone can be a leader i think leaders can be taught by learning from example set forth by other great leaders a good leader must have some unique qualities such as as i was talking about communication i was talking about confidence dedication and patience patience is very important you 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 know um uh, you just don't expect things to happen in a jiffy if you have set out to do a thing it will take time so patience is the name of the game flexibility adaptability empathy you know empathize with people their problems listen to them appreciate them appreciation self belief and all these things that i was talking about ability to talk ability to listen self awareness vision assertiveness truthfulness responsibility accountability of course loyalty loyalty is very important be loyal as i said don't sort of um swerve this side or that side when your focus is here when you, you when you determined to reach your destination it calls for that loyalty that i'm going to be here and i'm going to be on this path and i've chosen this path no matter what and i'm going to follow this and i will reach my destination so focus and determination and last but not least diligence which is like hard work shiddat um and perseverance all of this all of this is is important for a leader to kind of grow and have the rest of the people believe in a real leader i had heard somewhere that a real leader faces the music even when he dislikes the tune he and 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 this is this is very interesting he says a real leader takes a little more than his share of the blame he takes a little more than his share of the blame a little less than his share of his credit he doesn't mind the criticism if it's untrue he disregards it if it's unfair he keeps from irritation if it's arrogant he smiles and if it's justified he learns from it so you have to be open minded you can't be rigid and you can't be i'm the be all and end all you cannot be you have to be open as i said you have to be flexible but uh, unfortunately true to the tenor of modern times the best of leaders are sometimes confused the trouble with being a leader today is that you can't be sure if people are following you or chasing you but to sum it up all of you and i mean just all of you who are potential leaders who have the latent talent to lead people you can all become the proverbial pied piper with the hutspa 
charm and the charisma to inspire a million lives. Remember, if you are not afraid to face the music, you may someday lead the band. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for such an insightful session where you brought in so many nuggets of wisdom from your own personal experiences. And on Thank behalf you. of Bimtech National HRD Network and Deloitte. I would like to really thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Experiences with us. Thank sure, you. Sure. So I, I hope I didn't make a hash of things like actors are getting infamous for. Well, it's just <laughs> an expression. Not at all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you on the next uh, round table. And thank you. Definitely. And the next time. Thank you. And thank you all of you for being there and listening to me so patiently. Thank you. The next time we do it, uh, you know, in a, another... You have to do it uh, live. I have hotel. to see you. I can't even yes. see. This is like, you know, the I'm just imagining that there are a lot of people out there. The and whole organizing team will be really happy to have you in person with us. Well, that's so important because I don't know whether my audiences have gone off to sleep, they've gone home, or they're sitting around a round table having uh, some delectable wine, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. So next time I need to see them. I need to Definitely. I need to be assured that they are they are listening to me. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. And uh, pro to proceed forward. With our panel discussion today, we have with us our moderator, Mr. Ajay Soni. Chief Learning and Leadership Development Officer, Group HR, Aditya Birla Group, where his present responsibilities include driving learning, leadership development, succession management, strategic workforce planning, and career services from the group. He owns the process of talent management and senior leaders development across all the group companies. Mr. Sony had been a practice leader for leadership consulting Asia Pacific in AM Hovet earlier. His 30 years experience includes developing leadership strategy for organizations, executive coaching, talent and leadership assessments, etc. He has widely consulted in large scale change management, organizational restructuring, visioning, high performance workforce and HR transformation projects. He had been an advisor to various corporations in Asia Pacific and has consulted over 150 organizations across the region. Mr. Sony is a BTEC mechanical and MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. In his book, Manthan, co-authored with Professor K.K. Sinha, uh, the book is titled Manthan, The Art and Science of Building Leaders. They have synthesized the contemporary research and ancient Indian wisdom to propose a three-dimensional model for Indian leadership. Pleasure to have you with us today, Mr. Soni. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a very captivating evening with Mr. Ajay Soni and his power-packed panel here today. I request Mr. Sony to please elaborate on today's theme and introduce the panelists. Yeah. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Professor Mansi, Dr. Chaturvedi, uh, Professor Sina. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, and like Shekhar, uh, I have learned a lot from Professor Sina. I've been working with him uh, since 2003. Uh, for the last 18 years, I've been working with him. And every moment of our interaction is a learning experience. So. Uh, thanks to BIMTECH team, uh, fantastic team. Uh, I'm going to take 10 minutes and uh, connect some of the key aspects of the book to inspirational uh, leadership. Uh, and of course, this whole uh, leadership roundtable uh, goes back 10 years. I was uh, going to a client in Gurgaon in the car when Professor Sena called me and said that he wants to initiate a series of roundtables. What should be the topic? And out of nowhere, the thought that came to my mind was art and science of developing leaders. Uh, so I said, Professor Sina, we should talk about art and science of developing leaders. So here we are, 10 years down the line, reminiscing about uh, that. And of course, uh, then five years later, he called back again and said, now that we've done so many roundtables, let's write a book. And that's the book uh, that is in front of you. Uh, Vivek, if you could go forward. Uh, you know, our book... Uh, 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 Professor Sena was very sure that at least one chapter on that has to be devoted on leadership the India way. And our book did that. And today, Dr. Chaturvedi was talking about inspirational leadership and he talked about Mahatma Gandhi. 
Uh, well, this uh, here on this slide, I'm talking about uh, Lord Krishna. You know, who can be more inspirational than Lord Krishna himself? Uh, he epitomized, epitomized uh, leadership, uh, inspirational leadership itself. Plenty of stories uh, you would have read about his leadership qualities. Uh, one of the stories uh, is his explanation to Arjuna in the battlefield of Mahabharata, which has become Bhagavad Gita. Uh, during the war, Arjuna uh, fell down to the ground, defeated, lost in thought as to how could he ever take up arms against his elders. Krishna, uh, who was Arjuna's charioteer, uh, explained to his companion, his friend, the real essence of war, uh, one's duty, and uh, he, while explaining that, uh, took this form, which is visible to you on the slide, the cosmic vision, uh, almighty self called Vishwarupa. And uh, uh, Sri Krishna said to Arjun that I, I decide on sin and virtue, don't worry about that. You just focus on karma, on action. Uh, Shekhar also talked about that. Uh, Krishna uh, inspired uh, uh, Arjuna, uh, gave him the wisdom, and that ste steered Arjuna to action. And I just wanted to relate that to the three dimensions, Vivek, if you can go to the next slide. The three dimensions of leadership that we have proposed in our book, of course, those have come in from ancient wisdom uh, in the book, have also come in from the entire uh, development of India and India's economy and finally uh, the the most recent research at that time we had leveraged to come up with this and this was the synthesis uh, month and you can say of that knowledge and uh, a leader with depth, discipline and dynamism is a true Indian leader. That's what we had proposed in the book. Three dimensions of leadership. Now if we go back uh, to some of the things that Shekhar said, I was connecting uh, to Shekhar and Shekhar talked about vision and depth is all about vision. A leader needs to have a vision, purpose, but needs to work to a higher order. Uh, Shekhar talked about compassion. He talked about humility. Those are the aspects of depth. Uh, deep engagement with the, with, with the people around, that's the aspect about them. Moral discipline. Uh, I've taken the liberty of taking the word moral away for the sake of three dimensions. Uh, but moral discipline, which is the second one, and Shekhar talked about making a difference, uh, making a difference to the planet, to the people around us, to the business, and that's really the moral discipline. Uh, are we taking care of the environment? Are we taking care of our organization? Are we taking care of people and creating leadership bench strength? That's really moral discipline. And finally, dynamism, the resourcefulness, uh, quality of my actions. Uh, Shekhar talked about that as well. Achieving goal. Resilience, falling down and rising up again. So those are three dimensions of leadership. Uh, now, if that is what we propose in the book, uh, how does Lord Krishna's uh, you know last story connect to that? So depth, explaining in detail the true meaning of karma to Arjuna was the depth. Uh, moral discipline, he was led by strong moral discipline on what is right and what is wrong. That is what Lord Krishna in that story uh, depicts. And dynamism, revealing the Vishwarupa to Arjuna and explaining to him the essence of life, the dynamic form to inspire the defeated soul and get, to gain strength and fight back. So those, those were three dimensions of Krishna's uh, uh, inspirational leadership. So therefore, uh, but Lord, Lord Krishna was God. So does that mean inspirational leadership can be exhibit, exhibited only by gods? Uh, another story I want to share. Uh, which is the story of a boy and a starfish. A uh, lot of you may have heard this story. Uh, one day, a old man was walking along the beach when he noticed a young boy uh, picking up things and gently throwing it into the ocean. He approached the boy and said, what are you doing? The boy said, I am throwing the starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up, the tide is going out. So if I don't throw them back, they'll die. So he said, son, you, do you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make a difference. Uh, after listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish, threw it uh, into the sea and said, Smilingly, he said, I made difference to that one fish. A great story. A young, small boy. And uh, again, depth. You know, if you see the three dimensions, depth by thinking deep, doing an action that will make an impact to the small fish. That is depth of, of the boy's wisdom. Discipline. Uh, by moral discipline, by believing in his instincts, he demonstrated the moral discipline. 
and dynamism by quickly reacting to the situation and bringing the change to fish's life. So anybody and everybody uh, is a leader and anybody and everybody is an inspirational leader. We need to see in ourselves and we need to see in the, every person outside that inspiration. Can we move forward, please? Uh, I also want to uh, share and then I'll connect it to the three dimensions. I want to share a research we had done last year on uh, mindsets, what is below the surface. Uh, so uh, we conducted this research, both secondary, we looked at many models, many different global companies, Indian companies. And we did a primary research with 1100 senior most people. We have 13 companies in uh, ABG Group, Pehendalco, Ultratech, uh, uh, Adhitwala Capital, uh, at that time, Idea, and so many, now Vodafone Idea, so many different companies. So 1100 senior people, we did this survey. What came out were the following seven mindsets. Uh, the first one being conviction, holding a strong belief and then doing things basis that. Inclusive, open for different points of view. Trust, seeing others as reliable and being credible in what I do. Entrepreneurial mindset, the state of mind that enables me to feel for the company itself. I feel it's my company. Authentic, led by a moral compass and coming through by true self. Courage, uh, courage to act without fear. And agility, to act quickly in a rapidly transforming world. So these came out, our senior leader said, these are the seven most important mindsets. Now, what I do now is I connect these seven mindsets to the three dimensions. And Vivek, if we can go to the next slide, please. So conviction and trust are the mindsets that are sitting below depth. When we have conviction and we have trust, that's what is about depth uh, in a human being. Discipline is about inclusive and authenticity. Dynamism is about courage and entrepreneurial mindset. And finally, agility is something that runs across because agility has to be in thought, therefore depth. And action, which is dynamism. So agility has to run across all the three mindsets, uh, all the three uh, dimensions of each. And if we have these mindsets, then subsequently, if we have trust in ourselves, then we will empower our people. That's the behavior which will be visible. If we have conviction, then we will be driven by purpose, vision. If we are inclusive, we will encourage diversity. If we are authentic, we will be self-aware. If we are um, we have courage, then we will drive change and transformation. And if we are entrepreneurial in our mindset, then we will be globally competent. So that's the frame of leadership, inspirational leadership, deriving from the three dimensions that we introduced in our book. I thought I'll put that as a background before I get into the panel discussion. We did also conducted a survey with all of you who are present currently, about 150 of you are on the call. Uh, and many of you responded to this survey. The survey was done only for exclusively for this audience. And what we asked, many questions were asked. One question asked was, do you found your leaders L inspirational? Do you find your managers M inspirational? And are you inspirational? Interestingly, the average of uh, all of your responses, 3.9 on 5 is the score for leaders. How, are, how inspirational are they? 3.9 on 5. How inspirational am I? 4.1. Now, there are two ways of looking at this. One, if I'm a leader, I need to see which aspects of depth, discipline, dynamism am I not sharing with my people or not showing and I need, how do I improve? But if I am a self and I have, I have leaders to whom I'm looking forward to, I need to introspect. Am I stopping myself from actually getting inspired by my leaders? Am I too me-centric? Am I too self-centric? And I am finding that inspiration only coming from me and not from my manager and my leader. And I'm missing on those opportunities. So two ways of looking at that data. Three more insights I want to share on the slide before I move uh, to the panel. Number one, the leader score higher on mindsets related to dynamism. So when I we ask people, how are they you know, on different aspects, courage, entrepreneurial mindset, inclusive, authenticity, etc. The mindsets related to dynamism, which was courage and entrepreneurial mindset, leaders scored higher on that than on moral discipline, which is about inclusive and authenticity. So something for leaders to think about. 
uh, employees feel they themselves. I talked about it uh, about that. Employees feel they themselves are more inspirational than their leaders. Something for both leaders and employees to think about. And also, we we ask questions about inspirational leader. And we also ask questions about effective leader. And we found there is a huge correlation. Leaders who are seen to be inspirational are also seen to be effective as leaders. And so, if you want to be effective leader, then inspirational leader is the way to go. So those those were opening slides I had. I would. It's my pleasure to introduce the, the uh, panel with you. And uh, uh, I would first go with uh, Dwarka. And uh, Dwarka uh, was till recently he was uh, the chairman of GSK Consumer Healthcare. More than fifty years of experience in leadership development, human capital, <coughs> and involved with various professional bodies, held board positions, advisory positions. I asked uh, Dwarka about his inspiration, and uh, Dwarka said his father uh, is his inspiration because he taught him the art of tough love, how to be tough on issues. And soft on people, very very interesting. Dwarka also said uh, he learned from his mentor Simon Scarf the uh, act, the 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 magic of navigational skills uh, and how to respect everybody from Mali to Mali. Uh, very very interesting. And hidden truth, as you know, something that people don't know about him, he was a president of Students Union during his post graduation, and uh, most of his. Uh, you know, predecessors and successors in that uh, time frame became CMs, cabinet ministers, chief ministers. Although Dwarka himself uh, was a CM, he was, he, he was a chairman till recently. Uh, so uh, we'll go to Sadiqi. Such a pleasure, Sadiqi or Swati. Okay, uh, Vivek, which one? Okay, thanks, Swati. Uh, such a pleasure to have you currently uh, director HR for Amazon India operations. 20 plus years of experience across uh, prestigious companies like Max Healthcare, Glenmark, Putney, J and J, HUL. I share that company with you, Swati, uh, DSP, Merrill Lynch, and Amazon, of course, now. And uh, Swati's inspiration is this ABBA song: um, "Something Good in Everyone and Everything I See." Such so poignant, really. And uh, she gets inspired from everyday acts of kindness, optimism, and empathy. So that's uh, Swati for you. Rajiv, uh, Rajiv is currently uh, the chairman uh, Mahindra Insurance Brokers, Mahindra Steel Service Center, uh, Mahindra First Choice Wheels, retired in 2020 as the group president, HR and corporate services, and CEO, aftermarket uh, sector, member of uh, group executive board, Mahindra and Mahindra Limited. 45 years of experience, uh, 29 years with Tata's, 21 years with Tata Steel, seven years as the CEO of Tata Metallics, and then rallies India, of course. Uh, member of the governing body of ILO, uh, also of um, International Organization of Employees and National Executive Council of the His inspiration life, all the people that he interacts with, that's his inspiration. And also his inspiration is about possibility of creating positive change in lives of people and situations he comes uh, in contact with. Uh, hidden Truths, uh, past life experience and fire walking as a part of his long journey to answer a question who, who he really is. Uh, also, Rajiv uh, has acted a lot in the place, isn't it, uh, Rajiv? Uh, so, we'll now go to Siddiqui. And uh, currently working on future business strategy and people challenges for Maruti Suzuki. 40 years experience, his roles include COO, EDHR, special invitee on board of Maruti Suzuki. Worked with the Scots, DCM, Fiat, Maruti Suzuki, so really a motor enthusiast. And his inspiration, Steve Waugh and his leadership character, gets inspired by character of a human being, collaboration, modesty. And hidden truth is, he would have been a cricketer, uh, but landed in HR by default. And we are lucky uh, that, that uh, that's the direction you took. So that's the five of us here today with all of you looking forward. Can we have everybody alive? And we can go off the video. Welcome, everybody. Rajiv, Siddiqui, Dwarka, and Swati. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll start with uh, you, Dwarka. Yeah. 
and uh, you know, I talked about certain mindsets and uh, inclusive was one mindset that I talked about and in this volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, uh, a very important characteristic of a leader is to influence without authority and including people of all levels. Uh, your thoughts on this, your experience on this. Okay. How much time I have, Ajay? Thanks for having me here. How much time I have? Uh, we are going to go on this, uh, till about uh, 7.45 uh, in this panel discussion. Okay. Fine. No, it's fine. I'll take a few minutes. It's a great question, Ajay. Firstly, a lot of things have been said by Dr. Chaturvedi Ji and Mr. Suman Shekhar, and you also dealt with it. 3D leadership. So my my task is very simple, but I believed one thing right from the beginning. Let me start with a disclaimer. I'm neither a social scientist nor I'm an authority on Gita. So I can't talk on both of it. But also only thing I can talk about is cricket or the corporate. Okay, I prefer to go for cricket because a lot has been said in the corporate. I don't want to be very uh, in terms of try to be clinical or be conceptual rather than to share my experience very quickly. You see, I do believe, I always said, positional authority versus personal credibility. I think in terms of the VUCA world or virtual world, if for any leader, if you want to succeed, you call the inspiration leader out of science, both a science and an art, which is true. But having said that, what is the, when you have a position, and with personal credibility, it is nothing like it. But most of the cases, we talked about Nelson Mandela, you talked about Gandhi, these are all the, you talk about Martin Luther King, they're great examples, there are many, but I don't want to get into it that everybody is aware, but I just want to pick it up. The litmus test for a good leader, where they call the inspiration leader in order to call them, the personal credibility. I think you, you talked about many traits, I don't want to repeat it, when you have a purpose and you have a passion, at the same time, you have the credibility, according to me. Because in my 50 years of service, there are people whom I worked many years ago and they left us two, two decades or three decades. But still, if they call me up and say, today I'm making a change, what do you think? Even within GlaxoSmith, and I am not in the system now. He said, how do you want to make my career? That shows to me that this person believes that you can add value and you are very credible in giving your advice. I think this doesn't come with the position. Positions come and go, but this credibility with the influence you have, the positional personal power, which makes a difference. That is a true litmus test for me in order to be a, an inspiration leader, regardless of the position. The question is whether you have a rank or not. So for me, MS Dhoni, uh, he is a, he's a true leader in that sense where he didn't have a position in the sense he was sacked as the Indian ODI captain. Then he, he lost his uh, leadership role in the IPL where when he played for two years with um, Punjab. But still when the whole match was conducted, the captain was someone else, but everybody was looking for his guidance, the whole team. And he led them admirably to the finals. So it shows that to me, the, this is an organization as hero. In GSK, we said two things which I thought I would share here. Everyone committed and everyone contributing. That was the, one of the key values of GSK. That means if you want to do a research, it is not just the top scientists who get the credit, but it's a teamwork which makes a difference. So we said we don't want the Nobel laureates, but we wanted the we wanted team players to work because for a drug discovery, you require 10,000 people working on it. But ultimately, the credit may to go to few, but it is the teamwork which is important that makes the people to be inclusive. This is where I said, you know, even Simon Scarf, who was my leader for many years, ability to connect from a watchman or a gardener to the chairman of the company regardless of the position and ranks they hold, that is a true authentic leadership which will demonstrate, try as you call the inclusiveness, of what is into your approachable and you are willing to listen to others' views. They may differ, but still you respect that. And secondly, you have one common purpose. This is where I said 
organization as hero this is this second principle of gsk organization as hero ultimately we are all working with a common purpose to achieve something which is our global quest to improve the quality of human life by enabling people to do more the focus is quality of human life how do you do it we may not produce any product which cannot clinically prove it can add value so this is a dimension you know then when the common purpose is there and the leader is driving only to that whether he holds a position of authority or not then you know people would would accept it this the third bit i would like to focus is develop self and others personal credibility cannot also come when you don't have a position or even if you have a position if you don't have that credibility that you can add value you are relevant to them you can you will give a very honest and a genuine advice or or a coaching or a mentoring that is where the, the it is a more a push more a pull rather than a push strategy which makes it the last but not the least as i said you know this is the ultimately you talked about discipline for me the simple word is art of tough love i think include when a leader is inspirational and he may hold authority sometimes he may not hold authority but not only ability to manage from mali to malik but also take tough calls in the pandemic times you need to take a tough calls but an inspirational leader will take it when he holds a position that you know giving respect and dignity this is where i learned a lot from from my company gsk it during mergers and uh, restructuring many people not only the pandemic but earlier but the way they treated them with respect and dignity and the way communicated them and felt compassionate com- as if shown compassion makes them feel that you know you are true leader who that will hold on even when you don't hold a position and that is where you bring so to sum it up it is ultimately leadership at all level everyone can commit and contribute provided you have that self belief on you and belief in others for me that is why dhoni is a great leader because without any authority last year he lost badly in the ipl but you know he said my team will come back and they won the ipl today when you call it dad's team or uncle's team but they still they can do it because they had that firm conviction and a common purpose and that will make you know when he goes and he talks to very junior players unlike some of the senior indian captains and players who will not meet, meet unless they are somebody of equal stature this is where the brief bring that inclusiveness and mali to malik navigational skills to sum it up it is for me the navigation skills with lot of credibility which makes an inspiration leader regardless of his position very very well said uh, dwarka personal credibility which comes from developing self teamwork tough love very very interesting uh, rajiv uh, your thoughts on inclusive and influence without authority okay so uh, let me uh, sort of start with the uh, saying that you talked about a vuka world which is the new normal that we are going to live in uh, in this vuka world i think one characteristic of organizations that succeed would be their ability to have a proactive decision making and action right through the value chain that means the concept of distributed leadership you cannot have distributed leadership if you have an extreme command and control and to me if authority were to mean the extreme command and control mode uh, you know which uh, used to be very popular at one stage uh, that would be a recipe for disaster because of the needs of proactive decision making and uh, action right through the value chain and requiring distributed leadership so that's the logic to me of why the leader has to have influence because that sets the purpose and the overall approach without having the authority which would mean command and control now let me go one uh, any example rajiv comes to mind uh, when you talk about distributed leadership with so much experience you have any example comes to mind well, i mean all over the place i mean uh, you know so okay let me give you uh, my uh, my favorite example from my life you know for two years i did an extraordinary assignment i was the 
general manager town services of tata steel which which meant that you know we i was literally running not me but the town division used to run the town 64 square kilometers roads electricity water supply sewage sanitation uh, security legal market schools what have you now uh, this was a very complex ecosystem but when uh, at least my uh, uh, style was let me make sure that people who are running these departments and down the line they don't have to come to me to take decisions things should move at points right through and i don't want that much control i do not want control i want only exceptions to come and i want the broader vision it was a huge risk but it was run by the fact that an old man who had run the town before told me raji don't try to make change for the sake of change this town division is running well focus on a few things allow people to do what they're doing and i saw how it worked beautifully so that was one practical example i i just want to comment also on the inclusiveness part right so now this inclusiveness part comes from the fact that in the new normal everything is interconnected right now in that interconnectedness you need to have a detailed knowledge of what your stakeholders want right and you need to harness all the potential that you have within the organization to solve the problems of your stakeholders because basically organizations or businesses are solving problems now to be able to know what the problems are you have to engage and listen to all your stakeholders which is what inclusiveness means plus you have to harness all the strengths that you have which is what inclusiveness means inside the organization so to be able to know what the problem is and to be able to find the answers and implement the answers you need to be inclusive so that's how i would uh, look at the logic of influence without authority and inclusiveness in the new normal of vuka very interesting generally inclusive we feel it's about finding solutions but even finding problems and issues you need to be inclusive and ensure ground up comes very very interesting uh i'll i'll come to you uh, sidiki the covid has made us experience many situations where we had to take very difficult decisions with calmness even when the situation was stressful this requires immense courage guts uh, your experience some stories that come to your mind regarding this yeah ajay thank you i think uh, uh, first of all uh, thank you for having us here on this panel and it was very interesting what i have heard so far right from dr chaturvedi then mr shikhar suman and then you gave this little glimpse about manthan uh, very interesting uh, i personally have always believed that leadership does require courage and guts you know and i have been talking about it many years to the youngsters that it is not only that you know kind of a attractive kind of a position where you enjoy everything and perks and power i think it does require uh, a lot of courage and guts at times especially for key decision making maybe communication and also walking the talk uh maybe when i look at uh, adversity it becomes all the more tough to take calls you know for as a leader it recently happened as you mentioned about covid first wave was sudden great anxiety lot of fear so after the lockdown was lifted in may 2020 partially we decided to open the factory operations i thought that was a very very tough responsibility to take 35000 people getting into this covid situation and working for us uh, but we made that call uh, we had that culture we had that leadership to lead by example we started going three days a week to the factory ourselves but even tougher ajay was the decision during the second wave again in the month of may where people were having this uh, great disastrous infection and also fatality cases were being reported that we decided to close complete operations of maruti for 16 days first may to 16th may which is 180000 cars a month means almost 80000 cars coming in at that expense but communicating this decision to the board and also to the head office in japan i think required lot of guts and courage but i think once you are convinced as a leader with the purpose and with the people interest in mind i think that courage is very much part of the decision making one very interesting story which perhaps is more uh, i think known to people in terms of this 
incident of violence at our Manasa plant 18 July 2012. And I think within a week, one decision was taken by Mr. Bhargav. He advised me strictly that all of you uh, who are going to Manasa now, change your cars regularly. And in your cars, there should be armed guards. So I also started doing that. For two, three days, this guy was with, you know, armed guard was sitting in the front seat. And then I thought that perception-wise, people outside, including the workers and all others, will get to see that this HR leader is weak. He's having this armed guard. So I asked him, oh, you get off from this car, no, no longer required by. I used the same car all that period just to ensure that you lead by example. Because at that point of time, HR was the face of leadership in the company, reviving that dreadful kind of incident, bringing company operations back into normal. Six, eight, nine months. Families were watching what exactly the company is going to do. So I think somewhere, courage and gut in leadership is part of the way. So, uh, Siddiqui, a very interesting and poignant example you gave where, you know, your life can be, you know, impacted by this. And yet you took a very courageous, inspirational decision. Uh, what helps you make that kind of a decision? On one side is how you are seen as a leader. On the other side uh, is really your family and how family would react. You yourself, uh, you know, it's about life. Uh, so, so, what helps you uh, at that point, get that courage. I think uh, uh, when, when I look at uh, what all has been said so far, you talked about the moral discipline part of one dimension of leadership. And Shekhar talked about this integrity. Number of times he was talking about this integrity. I think somewhere you will have to accept leadership role with that kind of moral. In my thinking, it is not the role. It is the kind of purpose which drives the leadership mindset. And when I look at that purpose in 2012, being the sole leader at that point of time, my right hand, left hand were all hospitalized. At that point of time, one wrong step on my part would have communicated a kind of a weak character of my entire company. And Dwarka said just a just few minutes back that company is the hero, organization is the hero. And to protect that, we have to have that moral depth, that moral discipline you talked about in terms of anything above beyond your personal self or need or any such thing and to a great extent i think that mindset also reflects the kind of character you bring to the table as a leader it helped big way very very interesting uh, swati uh, i would ask you first a question which has come from panel uh, muskan sharma has asked what is more important in order to create inspirational leaders inspiration or mentorship so, Swati, if we can have you live, please. Sure. Um, I looked at that question and I was thinking uh, to myself, you know, it's very hard to mentor someone who has no inspiration inside of them. So, uh, I, I guess it's, uh, you need a, you, a leader has some qualities which exist. They have the moral conviction. They have the desire to do something big. They have a purpose. You can mentor that to make a leader brilliant and you can help them shine. And if I were to go to your example of Lord Krishna, I think he can help Arjun shine, but Arjuna had to be Arjuna for him to shine. So I think, yes, everybody can be a leader, but fundamentally there will always be leaders who will shine brighter than others. And what mentorship can do is bring that light out. So we need that seed of inspiration inside and then mentorship can be the nutrient which will grow the seed into a sap. Uh, very, very interesting. Swati, your thoughts on courage and the examples that come to your mind in your professional life uh, where courage is shown out. I was thinking of, uh, you know, what uh, Siddiqui said, and, and I echo the sentiment that as a leader, courage is something which is very fundamental, moral courage, courage of making decisions, courage of being judged. I see another question there um, saying, you know, how do you feel when you're judged? I think uh, that that's something that you get used to as a leader. And in fact, one of the things we say in Amazon is you have to have the ability to be misunderstood for long periods of time as a leader and be comfortable with that, um, uh, provided you're very clear about what you're doing and you know that you're doing it for the right reasons. And, and obviously, you're inclusive in your decision in the first place. Um, to me, some of that stood, for example, in COVID, and you talked of COVID, Siddiqui, is um, 
we did not have um, the luxury both out of choice and out of our own convictions to close operations as e-commerce we believed that it was our responsibility to stand by our customers during the times uh, that they were going through now that had multiple implications it meant are we putting our employees at risk are we not prioritizing our employees because we want to prioritize customers um and there is an opportunity to be misunderstood that we are trying to put our employees at risk because we want to make money um and i think um, uh, those are very hard decisions uh, to take and i think for us it was about saying it is not about the money we make because many of the um, uh, you know many of the actual shopping behaviors were frankly not ones that were going to create a lot of value um for the company but it was about that there are customers out there who have bought on our platform and who continue to trust us uh, to get things to them when they cannot step out um uh, and to be able to serve that was a bigger purpose now while you do that how do you support your employees in order to make sure that we are not putting them at risk which meant significant decisions in investment um in terms of cost in terms of infrastructure in terms of protective equipment in terms finally of vaccination and very little known but i think the kind of investment that amazon made in actually saying we are willing even to partner to uh, you know support identification of vaccines testing in a big way um uh, you know supporting large scale manufacturers uh, and doing a lot of education on covid supporting research on covid but really making sure also that you spoke rajiv of distributed leadership but also actually helping people to stand up to support each other in this whole journey so a lot of infrastructure to be put in place where we had over 1300 people stepping up as covid warriors who were actually running dedicated helplines through that entire period helping all our employees irrespective of type of employment including for example uh, you know people who drove our trucks um, you know rajiv from example from mahindra you know people who drove our trucks we we actually supported almost everyone and our perspective was we are doing this for the customer so taking those kind of decisions are also about courage okay great thanks for that swadi i think kondenya uh, uh, you got the answer your question was also tackled by swadi uh, i there is a question by arvind uh, and i request varka to answer that so arvind belwarkar has asked what are dimensions of moral leadership please specify varka would you like to throw light on okay um, the uh, i think we talked about the morals ultimately um, tone at the top lead from the front these are the examples you know you can moral the, according to me nelson mandela could could really do it with a moral authority because he spent 20 years 8 years in jail and you could drive the moment but to just to give a corporate example a uh, swati talked about the courage when you have the moral authority with a conviction and belief that you can do it and this is for the purpose of the organization and when you see organization as hero it will automatically flow i just want to give you a gsk example um, here ajay very quickly i just touched upon i think this is the required moral authority you know it's very easy to make vision statements and the mission statements all making big but how do you practice them is a very important moral values which i give lot of importance it has to start from the top so to just to give you yeah, our global quest is to improve the quality of human life by enabling people to do more live longer and healthier you see the focus is on quality of leadership when there was a big restructuring they said any product we do which cannot clinically prove that it can enhance the quality of life who will sell it despite the fact is is a cash cow for example to give you brill cream and yardley talcum powder gsk said we don't want them because we can't clinically prove it can add value i mean in the process you lost tons and tons of money but that is the vision statement which company has purposely took uh, as a team then it has to start from the top everybody watching are you going to sell this he said yes we did it so i think you know you may call it is not is not a it doesn't have a business savvy this is the where that's why we stood our ground as a gsk we could produce many vaccines and so on become a leader in the otc and pharma but you know we lost many businesses personal care but that is our philosophy we are not in salt to steel 
We are not in some other FMCG company. We want to see 70% of our shelf is filled with our products. So that gives it demonstrated the tone of the tone at the top, uh, the vision and the purpose is not in, it's not only in letter, but also in spirit. You know, very, very well said there really flows from the top and from the purpose probably. There were three things that were coming to my mind uh, with regard to moral discipline. I think moral discipline is all about balancing dilemmas. And uh, whether it is long in the short term, balancing long in the short term, whether, whether it is balancing the goals of the company with the goals of the society or the environment, balancing the aspirations of the people and requirements of the company. So I think it is all about balancing various aspects of dilemmas uh, as I uh, see it. I want to have a small learning from Japan on this one, you know, very relevant. Integrity, yeah. character and intent. Japanese CEOs and leaders I think uh, show this uh, and slightest of deviation and they will offer their resignation. Again, integrity, character and intent. Also one very relevant point and I think from your Hewitt experience you may remember that the ratio between the lowest paid and the highest paid in Japan is about 28 times. And for all of us it's 500 times, 800 times. So perhaps moral, the kind of question which I read to a great extent from the leadership perspective will definitely reflect on integrity, character, and uh, intent. Being fair and seeing fair. Being fair is fine. Intent is fine. But even ensuring that we are seen fair because perceptions are greater than reality. Very tough, but that is the way it is. A good learning from Japan. Yeah, fantastic. Integrity, character, intent, being fair, seen fair. Uh, perception is reality. Very, very nicely said, Siddiqui. And uh, uh, would come to you, Swati, uh, on authentic leadership. Uh, uh, this has emerged as one of the most important aspect of uh, uh, inspirational leader. How would you define Swati or uh, authentic leader? Um, it's one of the most difficult ones, actually, as as a as a trait in a leader. Uh, primarily because it is about how you're seen and not necessarily only about how you are. Of course, it's a lot about who you are and how you are. Uh, to me, an empathetic uh, leader is an authentic leader. To me, a leader who's vulnerable is an authentic leader. To me, someone who genuinely feels pain of someone else is an authentic leader. And that becomes very obvious to people you lead. Um, and there have been multiple examples through my career, even recently at Amazon, when I see leaders standing up. And, you know, we did this whole exercise um, over the last few uh, months around inclusion, around, um, you know, embracing diversity, around authenticity. Um, and we use this concept of human library and we got our leaders to actually meet up. Uh, with the different kinds of employee personas we have. And through those conversations, when they heard these stories, as well as when the leaders shared their own stories, the kind of relationship that the employees started to perceive as well about their leaders, right? It was to see that, okay, these are human beings, they fail, they're comfortable being vocally self-critical, they're comfortable being challenged. Um, I think it opens up a very different environment in the organization. So authenticity often is about being real um it can often get misinterpreted as being honest it's not just about being honest or having integrity but it's about um understanding and being able to be in the moment with the person you're actually interacting with and for them to experience you first as a human being and second as whatever that that you may be wanting to get them to very 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 interesting so being vulnerable and coming across first as a human and then by Anything else? Very, very interesting. Swati, there's a question here, uh, which is leaders are many times, this is Dr. Manju Punya, leaders are many a times misunderstood for a long period of time. Should leaders take effort to clear such misunderstanding? If yes, when does the leader decide to clear the air of misunderstanding? For me, uh, the being misunderstood is about is not about not stating what you stand for. Um, I think fundamentally a leader 
to be authentic, to be credible, will all and to be courageous, will need to state what they stand for. So it is about saying, this is my vision. This is how I lead things. This is where we are going together. And all of us are going there together. Now, when we say that, there is a possibility that there are a few individuals who do not buy into that vision or do not agree with the methodology or the way that you want to do it. Um, I think that is the point where the leader is, has to be willing to be misunderstood because what they are seeing is probably bigger uh, and happier at the end of the story, while in the story to be able to carry individuals who may not necessarily agree that the ending of the story that you see is the ending of the story that they see. And for me, the best example of that, I mean, I, I can't but help it, is Jeff Bezos, right, who in his first shareholder letter was laughed out by national television um, around the world when he said, I will be customer obsessed and, um, you know, uh, my, my idea will be to pass on benefits to the customer. And, and you know, when you look at that, that video, that's actually on live television, when people said, you must be mad, you're never going to make money. Um, and I think, uh, you know, he's probably had the last laugh on that one, but he's been willing to be misunderstood for over 10 years. And frankly, even today. So I think it is about saying you, you have a vision, you have a purpose, you're seeing something bigger. But at the same time, having the humility to know that not everyone is seeing what you're seeing uh, and therefore to constantly be clear and again and again specify where are you going and why are you going there. So a follow up question to that triggered in my mind. Um, there are times when you will be right. After 10 years, people will see that. But there are times then a leader will be wrong. Have you, how have you seen a leader handle that in an authentic manner? Or if you have a personal story around that, if you could share that. Oh, I've been wrong multiple times, I think, <laughs> in, in my life and in my career. Uh, and I think for me, the, uh, the opportunity always is to be very honest about opening up and being honest about actually saying I goofed up or, or that I was wrong. And I think one of the best ways I have learned to do this um, is when in a decision, um, you're with a team and you're making a decision and somebody else has a very strong point and they're very passionate about it, which is opposite of yours. You may be in a position to say no, but the frame of reference for me is always, is it a two-way door? And if it is a two-way door, which is if we go with this idea, which I don't necessarily agree with, what are the early signs of success or failure? And there are multiple times when somebody really young and bright in my team has proved me wrong because we went ahead with their idea and it was really a brilliant idea, which in my frame of reference, I wouldn't have thought about. Right. Uh, so I think it's that opportunity to give space to others um, to say, hey, listen, I could be wrong. And to do it so openly in a team environment to say, OK, let's go with what you're saying. I disagree, but I'll commit to what you're saying. Let's go ahead and let's try it. Um, and maybe. Uh, let's see what happens, right? And to do it honestly, um, I think it creates this whole spirit of building other leaders and you learn with them. I think you learn with, with people. And I've done that many times and I've goofed up many, many times. I can't even count how many. So, Ajay, can I, Ajay it's a very easy to talk about the great characteristics of a good leader. But I think we need to be conscious about it at the cost benefit of all the viewers and for me as well. It is it's nice to say something. There is a thin difference with organization as hero and hero worshipping. You know, I think, you know, sometimes you see the points where people perceive you for many years. Some of them can prove it as Swati said rightly, but some of them may not wait because the personal branding overrides the company stature. And companies banding, and in the process, you see the succession planning is stalled, or you know there is no leadership <laughs> succession planning. All this happens. You may be seen still as a great leader, but I have my doubts there. I think we need to be honest on this. To be candid with you, I think this is where there is a thin difference in saying organization hero, as Sakleen also said it, and hero worshiping. Sometimes we have seen a CEO continuing for twenty years, twenty five years extending the retirement age forever. I think these are the challenges, you know, sometimes we need to be conscious about it as a HR leaders. Very, very well put, Dwarka, there, that it's really company and not the leader, which is as important. I come to you, Siddiqui, uh, seeing you smile. Uh, we talked about leaders failing. But Siddiqui, what about when uh, people fail? Uh, how do leaders help them success, uh, achieve success better 
what is your experience and what is what are some examples that you that come to your mind yeah i think it's quite uh, a coincidence that when i joined maruti there was a clear mandate change this company from a public sector to a private sector wonderful one sentence board was very happy i was very happy because none of us were sure how it will happen you know a company which has been a government company for 21 years changed it to a private sector and that to japanese multinational but i think ajay what big learning i have is that when we look at leading with head heart and courage with a very clear purpose with ethical governance clearly uh, where you are able to create the right kind of perceptions in people the purpose at that point of time in 2003 2004 was for those 6000 people in maruti at that point of time that whether in 2010 we will remain number one auto industry continue to make profits and we'll all be growing that was the common purpose created around this major transformation which took 5 years for us to achieve but as when we look at this buying in of maybe 6000 7000 10000 people into the top leadership ethos and perhaps looking at that kind of credibility when we look at leading with head heart and courage and also with ethical perspective common purpose coming into play i think you can drive a uh, big achievement in any space forget about private sector or whatever kind of identity i think the uh, proof of the pudding is that uh, 2003 and now 2021 we are still 50% market share driving the company's business profit growth people are growing and the best part ajay in this perspective is that buying talent from outside we have never believed in maruti you have worked with us long time but if we have looked at you know channeling this internal talent to take up this growth this leadership role and somewhere i think what dwarka mentioning this point of succession i think that also is the test of leadership character in my thinking in that perhaps to a great extent job rotation developing people giving the internal talent the first opportunity i think where perhaps we have learned from japan from our head office and we have done it in maruti also perhaps authentic leadership one perspective i think 2007 8 when uh, we were seeing people were part of that global recession companies hr was involved in a lot of downsizing negative decisions you will be surprised that i was asked this question at the board level by mr barber how you are going to protect our contract workers they are the most vulnerable and perhaps easiest for you to decide but whatever i think with the distributed leadership whatever our people did in production and hr went for some innovative solutions we did not Uh, do any such negative decision making even on contract people i think mr bargo is in my thinking in that sense is a great inspiration is a great example of authentic leadership caring about people not only for us but also for our shop floor people also for our temporary workmen i think somewhere it again reflects that kind of integrity character and intent i was referring to which really makes this composition of a great authenticity in terms of the leadership role fantastic mansi i am assuming i have to stop at 755 ha huh? mansi yes okay. yes 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 great so uh, i rajiv i'll pull you in and uh, oh, thank god i thought it forgot me <laughs> oh very much not uh, dr parmeshwar is asking a question some leaders are found to be brilliant but toxic please advise how to handle such leaders throw them out <laughs> you would do I mean, that i am very clear the choice between brilliance and toxicity uh, you know a, a brilliant leader who is toxic should be out i i i have zero doubt about that that's why <laughs> i said uh, so clearly to throw throw him out now but you got to be clear uh, what does it mean to be toxic and you've got to be really sure that you know you're talking about somebody who's toxic right so as long as you are sure then i think it's uh, clearly uh, the lack of toxicity in the organization is far more important than a wunderkind brilliant leader i mean i have uh, no doubt about that right uh, conviction is one mindset we talked about uh, rajiv and uh, uh, your experience on conviction when you have had to go against the tide uh, and holding that conviction or you've seen somebody else hold that conviction go against the tide and succeed could you throw a light some light on that yeah so you want me to give you a practical example 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me give you an example from the Mahindras, yeah. uh, where uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Anand Mahindra, and you know, I don't want to sound as if I'm hero worshipping, I'm very mindful of what uh, uh, Dwarka, my friend Dwarka said. He started something called the Rise Initiative, which basically said that our purpose as a business is to drive positive change in the lives of our stakeholders and communities to enable them to rise. So that's our purpose. And that purpose will determine the culture that we'll create. It will determine the kind of businesses we'll do and how we do them. Now, I remember that when this idea was first mooted, uh, there was a lot of skepticism, uh, including among our own people that, you know, what is this? <laughs> you know, this, the world of uh, business has no room for this philosophy and poetry and so on and so forth. You know, purpose was not a very uh, fashionable word back then. It is very fashionable now. Uh, but I saw how over 10 years, uh, the conviction that I am willing to place this uh, statement up front and there will be skeptics, there'll be a lot of people who laugh, there'll be a lot of analysts who say this uh, you know, group and this leader have gone cuckoo. But I will persist with it and I will really show how you can do great business while driving positive change in the lives of the stakeholders. And they were obviously, over, it's, it's still work in, in progress. I mean, you know, clearly it's a long, long journey. And there have been lots and lots of uh, ups and downs. But it's that courage of conviction, not only of Anand, but of a, of a group of people who were working with it. And then it was cascaded down. And I dare say uh, that if you talk to people across the Mahindra group, a lot of people will say that one of the biggest uh, assets that we have, or one of the most inspiring things that uh, keeps us working for Mahindra is this RISE philosophy that we will drive positive change and everything that we do and how we do it will come from there. Uh, I've seen this remarkable uh, journey uh, unfolding over the last 10 years. Yeah. Amazing story that Mahindra RISE, uh, that purpose. So really, thanks for sharing that, uh, Rajiv. There's a question from Ashok Ramachandran, of course, from our organization and my manager. So, Swati, this is, uh, I'm going to pose that to you. Your reflections and examples on how to nourish inspirational leadership amongst the emerging and early leaders. Um, I think what's, um, uh, what I've seen work and across multiple organizations and multiple good leaders who do this very well um, is to throw, uh, throw big problems at individuals very early. And those problems are not necessarily just about business problems, but problems which have multiple dimensions. So dimensions which would impact people, dimensions which would impact society, community. Um, and that's really how you see that seed of leadership grow in individuals. And often, um, often we have this thing in our head saying, you know, leadership growth is about people delivering brilliantly in their current jobs and then taking on a bigger job and delivering brilliantly in that job. And, and so it goes on. What you end up creating is operational excellence, not necessarily width of thinking or judgment or leadership. Um, all of that actually comes out of throwing very wide problems, which have multiple dimensions, which may have nothing. So you pick up an engineer who's, you know, second year into their job and Ask them to figure out, uh, you know, how you're going to uh, create an integrated, uh, you know, community program. I think it's those kind of things which really grow people because they learn to think of dimensions which could be multiple uh, and make hard choices, uh, make decisions sometimes which make them very uncomfortable. Uh, teaching individuals early on to lean into very uncomfortable spaces, both inside of themselves and outside of themselves, is another very good way to build inspirational leaders because it really changes your, how you're thinking, how you're making decisions. It's never about quality of getting better at the subject matter that, that you know you provide in the organization. That can be done by many. Thank you for that. Um, now I'll come to towards the end of uh, this session and with rapid fire questions for each of you, each four of you. 
So, uh, because given that Swati, you are on the screen. Uh, ideation versus execution. What's more important? That one's going to be hard for me because I don't know how you can execute without having ideation. So, you have um, to pick one. <laughs> Um, assuming ideas exist, then it's execution. Okay. Execution, what goes to that? Who would you reward more? Inclusive leader or the one who delivers results? Inclusive leader. First time right versus I failed and I learned. I failed and I learned. Okay. Thank you for that. That was very quick. I'll come to you, Siddiqui. And yes, uh, three rapid fire questions for you. Uh, skill versus attitude. What is more important in a leader? Obviously, attitude which can make experience to stay relevant and meaningful. You know? Okay. Can mindsets be shaped? Yes and no. Yes, absolutely yes. Okay. Being effective as a leader is more important than being inspirational. Do inspirational. Inspirational, okay. please. Okay. Rajiv, I come back to you. Charisma versus humility. What would you humility. go for? Humility. Okay. Employee mindset versus entrepreneurial mindset. What kind of leader would you prefer? Em employee mindset. Okay. Depth versus dynamism. For example, research focus, depth versus action focus, dynamism. Rajiv, what would you go for? Action. Okay, you're an action person. Last but not the least, uh, Dwarka, I come to you. Uh, yes. Action-led leadership versus people leadership. What would you go for, Dwarka? People leadership. People leadership. We love our people. Vertical growth versus developing depth in your area. Uh, depth in the area. Depth in the area. Don't all of, all of you... Listening, please develop depth in your area. That's what Dwarka would like. COVID as an opportunity versus purpose dictated opportunity. COVID as an opportunity. Okay, COVID as an opportunity. So I come to an end of the uh, uh, rapid fire. Now I'll go to all four, given that I have four minutes, one minute to each of the panelists to close today's session. What is your advice to the younger generation who wanted to make it big faster? And what would you call out as opportunities for them to shape themselves as inspirational leadership, inspirational leaders? Each one of you. Uh, let's go with Swati first. I think just don't hold yourself back. Um, do what you want to do. It's okay to fail. And God's always allowed you turns and so do organizations. Okay, nice. Thank you. Siddiqui. Instead of faster, uh, better to set, you know, smart and realistic goals. That's the first thing I say. Create your own professional identity. Don't cut, copy, paste anybody. I think look at collaboration. Look at respecting views of others. You'll do well. Very professional identity. Very, very interesting. Okay, Rajiv, your turn. Satya, frame and seva. These should be your guiding principles. Truth. Compassion and service. Wow, that's that's very very nice. And Dwarka, your final words, your advice to young generation. Passion with purpose. Passion. Very nice. Uh, before I hand over back to Professor Mansi, few things I jotted down as I was listening to the panel. What a fantastic panel! Thank you. I'm really so happy. I was able to do this with all of you. Great learning experience from all of you. Pearls of wisdom. A few things. Number one, uh, being fair and seen to be fair. That was what I heard. Integrity, uh, characteristic, uh, character and intent. That was the second thing I heard. Leader has a two-way door. Swati talked about that. Dwarka talked about organization as a hero. Uh, I heard uh, Siddiqui talk about head, heart and courage for common purpose and that Maruti story came alive. Uh, take care of vulnerable people of our organization that again came alive from Maruti. Uh, throw out the toxic leader, Rajiv was very clear about that and give early multi-dimensional challenges to young people again stuck in my mind. 
create a professional identity uh, was the ninth as the thing that I note down, and the tenth I note down was Satya, Prem, and Seva. So, with those words, I close this panel discussion and hand over back to BibTech team. Uh, Professor Mansi, over to you. And thanks to the audience for being a lovely audience and asking such great questions. Thank also, you. my heartfelt thanks to Vivek, my colleague, who's helped me uh, pull this whole thing together. So, heartfelt thanks to him as well. Thank you so much. And I already see appreciation, for, especially for the rapid fire round of questions in the chat window. So thank you to all of you for giving us such an insightful and very exciting session here, very lively session today. May I now request Mr. Dhananjay Singh, Director General, NHRDN, to please propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mansi. And uh, what a privilege to listen to the leaders here present. And uh, uh, 10 years is a good beginning, a good journey. And uh, compliments to uh, our leader, Dr. Harivan Shaturvedi, and the Sutradhar of the HR Roundtables, uh, uh, Professor K.K. Sena, and Dr. Manasi Chaudhary, and all of you. I can see uh, what a coincidence, uh, Siddiqui, sir, under his leadership, uh, this collaboration started in 2012. And uh, then all the leaders, NHRD uh, presidents, uh, Raju Dubey sir, and uh, then Mr. K. Ram Kumar sir, then uh, Mr. Satarshi Roy sir, Dr. Krish Shankar, uh, Mr. S. V. Nathan now, all of them have given their patronage to uh, this. And I would like to uh, say uh, today I'm remembering a lot uh, late uh, Dr. Pitam Singh, who is not with us, late uh, Mr. Kamal Singh. Uh, they are the leaders who really inspired and nurtured the uh, roundtables uh, over the years. Um, we are also grateful to every panelist who participated in last 37 roundtables, wherever we were, and all the participants in those roundtables. Doesn't matter whether it was uh, offline, on site programs, or uh, uh, online version of uh, HR roundtable. One thing which BIMTECH, NHRD, Aon Hewitt, Deloitte ensured that learning will not stop. So grateful thanks to and gratitude to each one of you. Uh, today's panel discussion, uh, amazing. In absentia, we would like to thank uh, Mr. Shekhar Suman. And this panel, amazingly moderated by Ajay Soni. Thank you. And our panelists, Dwarka sir, Rajiv sir, Siddiqui sir, Swati, uh, many members of our board, current board and uh, previous leadership teams, they are present in the audience. Grateful thanks to all of you for your presence. And our participants, you all are the soul of whatever we are doing. Because it is you for whom we curate this. It is the capability of the professionals which will define how HR profession will contribute, how leadership will contribute to the journey of the institutions and the society in which those institutions work. So with these words, thank you, Bintik uh, team, Deloitte team, the people from Aon Hewitt in the past who have contributed. Uh, people Matters, uh, uh, at one point in time, we started with them. Thanks, Esther and team in absentia and NHID team uh, for their contributions. Thank you. And we look forward to learn together and co-create something which adds value to our stakeholders. Thank you very much. And over to Dr. Marasi, please. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of day one of our celebrations. I'm sure that for each one of us, this program was an insightful and enriching experience. Please join us tomorrow as well in our discussions on the theme, Reinventing HR, an imperative for organizations. We look forward to our continuous feedback and engagement with us. On behalf of BIMTECH, NHRDN, and Deloitte, I would once again like to thank all our panelists for taking out time from their busy schedules and to share their experiences with us. A big thank you to our audience and to the organizing team from Deloitte, led by Mr. Nathan, team from NHRDN, led by Mr. Dhananjay Singh and Mr. Nalin Srivastava. 
Our own BIMTech team, led by Dr. Chaturvedi, Professor Sinha, Abhinav, faculty colleagues, and the student organizing team. Signing off tonight. Good night to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone.